I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, at the American College of Cardiology meeting in Chicago. A subset analysis from the Charisma trial suggests that there may be an interesting new use for a diagnostic device, an implantable loop recorder currently used in syncope patients. I'm talking now with Dr. Gordon Tomaselli about the use of the device in the Charisma trial. Dr. Tomaselli, what can you tell us about this, these results? Yes, so the Charisma trial looked at patients exactly as you said. They've had a heart attack. Their heart attack has not been bad enough for them to, to warrant the implantation of a defibrillator straight away. So they're in what's considered an intermediate risk group. They have a low level of heart function, but not low enough, again, to, uh, to justify a defibrillator implantation. And the question really is, how best to predict who amongst those patients is at risk for dying suddenly? The strategy taken by these Finnish investigators was to implant an implantable loop recorder, which is a diagnostic, not a therapeutic device, which will measure the heart rate and the rhythm 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It can be interrogated by the investigators, and the patient can also activate the loop recorder when they have symptoms. And they found a number of arrhythmias that were recorded by the loop recorders after heart attacks. Interestingly, the majority were not, for example, ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Which would be a shockable. Which situation. would be a shockable rhythm that a defibrillator would certainly um, help to terminate. But in fact, most of them were heart block and atrial arrhythmias or top chamber arrhythmias, which have prognostic uh, importance. And certainly the heart block rhythms, if they are persistent, can produce sudden death, just as a rapid ventricular rhythm can produce sudden death, except the treatment there would be pacing the heart, not shocking the heart. Well, what does this tell us? Um, I, I've heard you discuss in the past the, the changing nature of uh, sudden cardiac death, and is this another piece of the puzzle? What does that tell us about that? Well, I, I, think it, I think it does reflect some of the changing epidemiology of sudden cardiac death. A generation ago, before we, we, were, we were as good as we are now at treating coronary artery disease, at least acutely, I think we saw much more ventricular fibrillation um, and, and less of other rhythms that cause sudden death, like pulsus electrical activity. Um, so I think this, this study is a reflection of the changing epidemiology of the treatment of coronary heart disease and sudden death in that context. So um, just to sum up, um, this, I, I, if I get what you're, the sense of this is, this is interesting data, but you're not seeing that this is going to be something that's going to be flying in the clinical community anytime soon. Is that correct? Well, I think the goal would be to see what the density of these arrhythmias are in patients after MI. And, and if they are dense, then I think one could, in fact, justify moving somebody from an intermediate risk group to a high risk group, and then what you'd have to do is replace that implantable loop recorder with a defibrillator or a pacemaker. So to sum up, the internal loop recorder, an excellent diagnostic device, probably is not yet ready for use in patients post-MI with structural heart damage. I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.